evening, everybody. Alan slaughter for the Brevard Sports Network. And we continue here tonight in the beautiful downtown, but hot Melbourne studios today for some reason. Um, as we continue our summer series of interviews. And uh, very excited to have this guy in. Uh, first of all, because I've never sat down with him before. Second of all, because I've watched him religiously over the last two seasons uh, win our back-to-back Brevard Sports Network uh, Boys Lacrosse Player of the Year uh, award, and he's just as good as they come. Uh, you've heard myself, Caleb, uh, Jackson, Rob, just continuously sing this young man's praises, and we're going to find out a little bit about him today, a little bit about the sport of lacrosse, uh, how his summer's going, and what his future plans are. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Mr. Jackson Lynch. Jackson, what's going on, man? Uh, nothing much. Nothing good much. summer so far? Yeah, great summer. Make sure you lean into that. Oh, I want well, everybody yeah, to bad. hear you. Yeah, no, you're good. So I know recently that uh, you were away. And uh, you were away up in my neck of the woods. That's why I wore the Orioles jersey. You always look for a reason to wear an Orioles yeah, jersey. And, yeah, and I got one. You were up in Baltimore. What were you doing up there? So I just got back from a tournament, uh, the Sweet Lax Summer Showcase. Uh huh. I was playing with Sweet Lax. That was that was actually in Delaware. Okay. And then I did Showtime and Best in Class, which two showcases up there. Played really well, I hear. Fifty-eight save percentage at both Best in Class and the Maverick Showtime. Yep. Sixty-eight save, per, sixty-eight percent save percentage, and one hundred percent on clears uh, with your team, uh, Sweet Lax, in, in their first tournament. Uh, outstanding numbers. Yes, so the question begs here, uh, as good as you are at this sport, where does your love and passion for lacrosse come from? Well, I've, I've been playing lacrosse for forever. and <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, leaning a little bit. Oh, you know, yeah. I've been uh, playing lacrosse for forever since I was about eight years old, and it's been one of the first sports that I've actually like, clicked in. I was always pretty good at it, and – it it took some getting used to it because I came from football to lacrosse. Okay, but so yeah. you were used to the physical aspect of it and the conditioning. Aspect. Yep, yep. But, um, let me ask you this: Look, I played hockey for a long time. I was mm-hmm. just playing around uh, with the puck and the stick here in the studio before you got here, and it. I I, I always looked at goalies, hockey goalies. Anyway, they were just different breeds of people. In other words. You know, there's an old saying about carrying a certain set of something around in a dump truck, if you know what I mean. It takes, um, it really takes a lot of mm, to, to stand in front of shots that come at you, depending upon your age group, anywhere from 60 to 100 miles an hour. And uh, so what was it about goaltending that attracted you? Why did you want to be a goalie? Because you don't get the same equipment that they do in hockey. You guys hardly have nothing. Yeah, so basically my rec team, when I first started playing, I, my first two years of lacrosse, I played attack. And then after that, I, my team didn't have a goalie. So I just kind of like volunteered in one game. And then for the rest of the season, they just kind of sucked me in there. And then I just kept going with it. Like, that's kind of how it Fell started. in love with yeah. it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. it's addicting. It is. Mm-hmm. I've, I, you know, I've, I've played the position once or twice, and I would have continued playing it on the ice, but I, I, could, never do, I, could, never, I could never do the physical aspect of it, the splits, the, you know, what's mm-hmm. required to play the yep. position. So I was like, no, nah, I'll, just, I'll just be a thug. And uh, so that's what I did. But <laughs> for you, I mean, there, there is a skill set to what you do, and it's amazing to watch you. How much time, how many shots, because people see what you do on the field, right? I mean, they don't see what you do behind the scenes, the practice, the workouts, and that's all about taking shots too. How many shots would you say in an average workout week for Jackson Lynch do you take? Well, during the school season when we're at practice and everything, we spend, I spend the first 20 minutes of practice while everyone else is stretching and passing and just doing the normal warm-up stuff. I'm taking shots from, from either uh, players or coaches. Right. And that's probably like 100 to 200 shots right there. Wow. Uh, for and, like and 20 minutes straight. 
You ever get one of those shots where you wake up and the imprint of the ball is like on your chest? Or oh yeah, I'll get them. I'll get them all over my shoulders, <sighs> legs. Yeah, it hurts, man. Mm-hmm. It absolutely hurts. We are here with the Brevard Sports Network, back to back, uh, BSN Defensive Player of the Year in uh, lacrosse, and I got a feeling, just a feeling. Uh, no, I won't sing, but I got a feeling that sometime before. Uh, this young man steps off the stage that uh, he could very well become the first defensive player to be our overall player of the year. You've seen his highlights and his statistics uh, coming up on the screen as we talk to him. But uh, for those of you that don't like to, you know, read screen, a lot of people don't like to read those screens. In 22 games this year, as you look at some of his highlights, Jackson had 282 saves against 408 shots. That's nearly a 70% save percentage, 69.1. Uh, that's a 6% improvement over his freshman season. 65 ground balls, which is third on the team. 12 forced turnovers, which is incredible. Uh, and he went up against some of the state's best teams, Winter Park, Vero Beach, uh, St. Edwards, Holy Trinity, Windermere, Lake Brantley. Uh, never fell below a 50% save percentage in any of the games. And I think the telling story is – when you look at a coach like Bob Nunn, who's been around this game for a very, very long time and also hails from my neck of the uh, woods up in Baltimore, and if you know anything about guys my age from Baltimore when it comes to lacrosse, man, there are a lot of great stories guys like Bob Nunn can tell you. But Bob said that uh, his, you know, Jackson is a gamer. He always plays his best when the lights are brightest. In the biggest games, uh, Coach Nunn could count on him to step up. He thrives in pressure situations. Um what about pressure situations makes you want to step up? A lot of guys fold under that. They don't even know they do it. They just do. But you seem to recognize that moment. What is it about that moment that makes you step up? Well, it's I, I've always kind of just done better under pressure. I f- feel like it keeps me more engaged in right. the game and everything when it's rather than a blowout game or I, close games are where I where I do my best. Yeah. Because it keeps me engaged, keeps me excited. Keeps you going. Focused, yep. Yeah. And, and and it's important. Tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, obviously, you know, you, you, you were at a, a tournament uh, earlier this year, and, you know, you look at, at, at some of the scouts that were there, uh, and, and I mean D1 scouts, North Carolina, Michigan, Harvard, Dartmouth, Maryland, um, you know, all on the sidelines watching guys like, you play class of 2025. Tell me a little bit about what your expectations, goals, and plans are for the future. Um, I'm really keeping an open mind about college. Uh, my dream school, I'd say, might be UNC. Okay. I, big, big Tar Heels fan. Love the area. It's a great school. Wow. But I'm keeping an open mind about it. Um, ideally, I'd want to go to like a bigger school. Like with a lot of sports, good like good football team, big, yeah. like big North Ohio, Carolina, Ohio State, yeah. UNC type school. Yeah, but then I could also see myself at maybe an Ivy League or Patriot League school yeah. for better academics. You mentioned Ivy League. Tell me, tell me about the academic side of your equation, Jackson, because obviously you go play. Well, first of all, if you go play Ivy League lacrosse, uh, you're playing with some of the best schools in the world. Um, but you're also doing that. Uh, you're also getting one of the best educations in the world as well. So what do you like to study, and where are you in terms of GPA, things like that? Well, right now I've got, I believe I have a 4.1 GPA. Wow, congratulations, man. Thank That's you. the give it up there, Kayla. That's the most impressive part about his. Go ahead. Um, I'm not really sure what I want to do yet for a career. There's a few things. I'm always, I've always loved science and right. science the field of science. So I've been looking into that for college, but yeah, I'm just keeping an open mind about everything. There's a, there's a few different areas I'm looking at before, before, and I love your humbleness because, and we'll talk about it in a minute, uh, because obviously with some of the things that you've accomplished already and some of the things that you want to accomplish, seeing something like the PLL explode, Mm-hmm. to guys to be paid professionally to play this game. And, and we'll touch on that in a minute to see if that's something uh, that's that's up your uh, alley or want to do. We're here with Jackson Lynch, Vera High School. is going to be an, a rising, way rising junior coming in this season. And uh, so I guess my next question uh, for you would be, I want to talk about your team this year because I was really impressed with them. Um, 
you know, Coach Nunn comes in. And this was a really good team last year, too. This year, Coach Nunn gave it a different twist, a different look, a different conditioning style. You guys were X's and O's on the field. You were Uberzati off the field. What did you like about your team this year? Well, I think the best thing about our team this year was our chemistry. We had great chemistry. Everyone on the team is friends. Everyone loves each other. It's all great. And I think that has a lot to do with all of the extra stuff we do, like Uberzati. We're always just spending time with each other, always hanging out outside of the sport. So I think doing all of that really helped our chemistry on the field. What did you get out of Uber Zotti? What did you, uh, you know, for you, your goalie, you, you know, yes, conditioning is important because you can be a flurry of activity and, you know, obviously you need that conditioning to get up, get down, get up, get down. But you don't run up and down the field like everybody else does. Mm -hmm. What did you gain from Uber Zotti? I noticed a big, a big, uh, improvement in like my explosiveness and how fast my feet were i felt like i was able to explode the ball explode to the ball a lot better Fe felt like i was in more control like my legs were stronger have you scored that goal yet in high school no I'm, not. <laughs> I'm, working, on it. I'm working on it i asked that <laughs> because jackson rob and i and caleb late in the games when you guys are up we see you take off up the field i'm like He's going to get it this time. I know he's going to get trying, it this time. Uh, yeah, no, you definitely will. And I know you want it. Uh, it's a big thing. It's a big deal. A couple of years ago, we saw St. Edward's goalie do it mm -hmm. in our final four twice. Yep. We couldn't believe it. Absolutely couldn't believe it. And he did it. When he did it, he tied the game, and then he took the lead. If you, if you remember that. I remember that. that. I remember that. Were you, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was incredible. Yeah, Absolutely was, incredible. What do you need to improve in your game to be a guy? that in three years is a starting freshman for the Tar Heels? Um, <laughs> I think I've got to, got to stay consistent in my work ethic. Uh, I, there's a few things that I've got to work on, uh, like staying set when the shot's coming, uh, work on communicating better with my defense, just a few minor things like that that i got to work on. I think, I think those things come with years, you know, more maturity, uh, as you become a junior, and how was your transition to Vieira? You came in highly touted. You had a lot of eyes on you. How did you handle that pressure? Because um, well, you were young. I, yeah, yeah. I moved here about a week before my freshman year, and everyone had a lot of expectations. And I just, I told myself I'm going to go out and play my game and do what I need to do, and. And your game yeah. will speak for itself. Yep. Yes, sir. And it, and it certainly did. Uh, I'm curious. Tell me, I, I, I love texting back and forth with your dad. Um, your mom, Melanie, is fantastic. Tell me, tell me about your parents. Tell me about your family. So my dad, uh, he, he's a huge supporter of mine. Yeah. He, he always takes me to all my, all my events, everything like that. He played college football at the University of Florida. Nice. Yep. So, uh, big athlete in the family. My mom, she's also a big supporter of mine. She, she's always there. She's, t she's always at all my games. She actually videos all the, all the VRA high school games. Really? So, on my highlight reel, all those videos are from my mom. Wow. Yep. That is amazing. I mean, you know, because normally moms are so, you know, you think dads are intense watching sons play mm -hmm. sports. Mm, no. If you don't have children yet and you've never had a child play sports, wait until you go to a football game or a lacrosse game or a baseball game or whatever and see the moms. They are they're into it more than anybody else uh, in the crowds. And I love it. I think it's I think it's great. Um, what, what is it? Uh, I, I guess I want to switch gears now and go back. to. Well, let me ask you this before we move on to other things next year. Uh, I think with everyone that you have coming back mm -hmm. that the expectations are huge yep. for this Definitely. team next year. Um, I think there are a lot of people in the know in the lacrosse world from guys like, you know, myself, Caleb Lee over at Florida lacrosse that are expecting this program next year to do some, some really big things. Um, how do you guys shoulder those expectations and what are, the expectations you guys placed upon yourself for the off season and going into next year. Well, next year we're really looking to win districts. The past two years we've lost, actually three years, but two years since I've been here, we've lost to Vero in districts, uh, both times pretty close games, heartbreaking losses. And so 
our first step next year is to win districts, but after that, we want to make it pretty far in the playoffs. Yeah, no, I, I think that that is certainly a possibility. And I guess the next question is, for Brevard County supremacy, what's it going to take to get past Holy Trinity? Look, you and Justin Cole are the best two goalies in this county, and we had that debate all year long. Obviously, yeah. uh, you know, I love Justin. I love the way he plays the game. Um, but you won the award this year. So when you hear things like that, how does that make you feel about, you know, being talked about amongst the best players in this county? Well, I'm glad that Justin Cole is in this game, is playing in this county and is and is a great goalie because it always keeps me on my toes, always keeps me knowing that if if I don't keep working, if I don't keep improving, that push they, each other. Yeah, we we push each other. Yeah, exactly. That's that's outstanding, and you know, I mean, look, to win the award back to back is tough enough. To win it three times in a row is is difficult mm -hmm. and he comes back next year as yep. well so we're we're, we're going to be lacrosse blessed in this county next year one half of our players of the year come back next year in El Monte, right yep he's landed El Monte. DeShula graduated correct yep. um so we are extremely excited uh about the upcoming lacrosse season next spring here with jackson lynch from the vieira hawks and um so, all right, let's switch gears a little bit to going back and talking about the actual sport itself, lacrosse. You know, I watched a documentary recently on uh, Netflix about the Premier Lacrosse League and its growth and, and how it came about. Um, do you watch professional lacrosse? Obviously, I know you watch college lacrosse, but do you watch professional lacrosse? And seeing what Paul Rabel is doing in the sport, paying guys on a full-time basis. Is that something that now guys like yourself who are serious about the future of playing this game can set your sights on? Well, if the opportunity presents itself, yeah, I'd definitely take it. I love, love the game. I'd love to keep playing. But, yeah, I love what the PLO is doing because they're growing the game. They're getting more people exposure to it, and they're, just, they're able to grow the game through that. Who are some of, like, if I ask you right now, you know, who would be, you know, who are some of the goalies that you look up to in the world of lacrosse? Well, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Mikey Adler. He was a goalie for Duke two years ago. I think yeah. He, I, yeah, he went to the PLL. Yep. So when I was younger, I'd say maybe fifth, fifth and sixth grade, mm -hmm. I played for Extreme down in Fort Lauderdale. That's the feeder program to Aquinas. Okay. It's, it's now called FLX. Anyways, around that time, Mikey Adler was a junior and senior in high school. Uh huh. And he would train me during, before and during practice. Wow. So, yeah, I've, I've, uh, I got to know him pretty well. And yeah, I've always, I've always kind of looked up to him and his style of play when he was at Duke. I, uh, I, I, kind of a couple of years ago. I'm like, like, he's a freshman this year. I'm talking about Rupal from Maryland. I'm a Maryland fan. Yeah, I'm that Rupal. Is it, how, yeah, what kind exactly. of guy is Rupal? He's super funny. He's a really he? nice guy. I yeah, get that impression of about him. Yeah. So was there a foot in the crease or wasn't it a foot in the crease? Definitely foot in the crease. <laughs> Definitely foot in the crease. <laughs> I hear you. No doubt about it. Um, man, it's wild how both you and, uh, you know, our other Jackson, uh, Jackson Rob, is currently uh, this week in North Carolina. Now, this interview is airing the day before the 4th of July. We're recording it here on a Thursday prior to. But Jackson Robb is currently at the University of North Carolina right now attending a broadcasting camp. So, uh, obviously, both of you being the same year, I would love to see the two Jacksons uh, head to UNC uh, one of these days. So, uh, that's great, though, man. That that uh, Let's talk a little bit about uh, lacrosse is done we're not talking anymore yeah. lacrosse yeah. i want to talk about what you do for fun i noticed you at the beach volleyball games supporting your team you know supporting the school which i think is really cool what does because obviously you've had a couple of you know maybe 10 12 days off here what do you do for fun man uh i love fishing love what do you fish for I mainly go freshwater okay. because, I, I don't know, I haven't really gotten into the saltwater up here. Okay. I did a lot of saltwater back down in Jupiter where I used to live. Got you. But, yeah, I mainly go for freshwater in the local lakes around me. But I, I got love you. fishing, love being in the outdoors, go to the beach, I'm hanging out with my friends. You're a water guy. Yes, sir. No doubt. All right, so what are some of the, like, if I picked up your phone right now, 
and you're warming up, you're working out, you're at Uber's Adi. What do you got on the iPods? What's the music on the iPods? Uh, <laughs> I listen to a lot of country music. Who's your favorite country? Uh, a lot of Zach Bryant. Oh, okay. Guys. Uh, favorite Zach yeah. Bryant song? You got a favorite Bryant song? Um... Nah, I can't think of that. That's all right. Yeah, I, I don't know the names of them either, but they yeah. come on the radio, and, yeah. and I know them. Uh, yeah, I think a uh, funny story about Zach Bryan. He was on stage the other night, and uh, I think he's an Eagles fan, I want to say. And I think the other night he was on stage. I think it's Zach Bryan was on stage, and Daniel, he was on stage with Daniel, Daniel Jones, Jones from, the, Jones. from the Giants, oh, wow. and Zach Bryan looked at Daniel Jones. They were singing a song together, and Daniel Bryan looked at, or Zach Bryan looked at Daniel Jones and said, Go birds, and that had to be an awkward moment. Oh, that's cool. uh, but uh, movies, video games, you do any of that stuff? Uh, not really. I don't really play video games. Gotcha. I've never played video games growing up. Yeah, so it hasn't really been my thing. So, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna name. I'm gonna talk. What do you like to eat? You get to travel a lot. Big seafood guy. Up All right. Up in Baltimore, love crab cakes. Crab, love crab. It's my favorite food. Tell me about the wings at uh, Chop, or the uh, Old Bay chicken wings at Chop Tank. Best chicken wings ever. 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 Old Bay seasoning. Unbelievable. Wow. So good. People just don't know until you know about Old Bay seasoning, isn't it? Old, Old Bay honey, best wing seasoning ever. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And uh, crab cakes, man. Where in Baltimore, if you know the name of the place, do you guys go to get a good crab cake? So, oh man, what's the name of the town? I'm going to give you a name of a place the next time you and your dad go. It's called G&M Restaurant. G&M Restaurant. It is not but 10 minutes just outside of Baltimore, mm -hmm. right off of I-695. If you want the best crab cake you've ever had in your life, you can go to this restaurant, G&M. But where do you, where's the place you're talking so about? So there's this place we always go. So you familiar with Goalie Smith? Mm -hmm. Right next to the Goalie Smith, where they do like yeah. their, their weekly uh, weekly sessions. Yep. There's this place called Mama's on the Half Shelf. Okay. Amazing crab cakes. I get the crab cake sandwich there. It's amazing. It, and and I'll tell you, it's like eating air. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's fluffy. It's good. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a seafood guy. You can't get me to eat fish, but I'll eat a good crab cake and I'll eat a good crab. Have you learned the art of cracking crabs yet? Have you done that? Not I. I go for like the uh, the uh, what are they called the king crabs. Got gotcha. like you. You like the leg? leg. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have I, you I seen people up in Baltimore eating oh, these yeah. crabs oh, with yeah. like oh, piled yeah. up, all steamed? In the buckets. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That's awesome, Jackson. I tell you, man, um, you are uh, fun to watch on the field and a great young man, no doubt about it. And we are excited that you were able uh, to come in here today. If there were one thing that you wanted everybody to know about your team, what, you know, the I guess if if I tasked you with the responsibility of telling me one thing that best lets everybody know what the Vera Hawk Lacrosse program is about, what what how would you explain it? Well, I already talked about this, but our chemistry. Yeah, I think that's the best. Attribute Where do you think that comes from? Uh, well, Vieira is a smaller, smaller community, so we're all closer together. Everyone's friends. Everyone's always hanging out over the weekends. Tell me about Bob Nunn. Bob Nunn sings your praises constantly. What do you tell me about Bob Nunn? Uh, he's a good coach, always warming me up in practices. Yeah, yeah he does a good job. He's got some great stories, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got he's got some good stories. <laughs> I, I yeah. love talking to Coach Nunn. Uh, uh, he, he's he, a funny guy. He is a funny guy. He definitely, definitely is. Well, Jackson, uh, this has been a, uh, a lot of fun. Um, and I'm glad you came in. Mm -hmm. I really am glad you came Thank in. You. And uh, obviously, you know that uh, heading into next year, the two-time Brevard Sports Network uh, defending defensive player of the year, uh, no doubt he's the leader in the clubhouse going in. It will, and, and I'll just put it out there. It's going to be fun to watch him and Justin battle it out next year. Not just for something like that, because both Justin and Jackson are team guys. These are team guys. They're team first, individual second. And so the thing that's going to be fun is to watch those two teams next year. And what, because I think, no, I don't think I know. I know Veers closed that gap. A little more on Holy Trinity, and uh, 
They got close this year. Only lost by two, I think. Eight six, right? Uh, ten ten eight. Ten eight. Close game. We ten. Were, it was a it was we a cl- close game. They were up, and uh, he <laughs> definitely reminded me of that. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, I get it. And uh, but no, obviously uh, that that that's going to be a fun rivalry to watch this year. But you also got to watch out for other teams too as lacrosse continues to build here in Brevard County. What does this county need to do? You've been everywhere. You've been to the big northeast places. You've seen this sport where it's played religiously by the best in the world. What do you think we need to do here in Brevard County, Jackson, to continue to, to, to move forward? Well, I think what Big Wave is doing and doing all those uh, local club teams and programs and everything like that, it's anything to grow the game, make it more popular. Because there's only a few spots in Florida where lacrosse is like, Competitively played, right like down in Jupiter, Fort Lauderdale, up in Jacksonville, Orlando. Right. That's that's where like lacrosse, T- Tampa. That's right. where it's like com- really competitively played. That's where it like almost lacrosse hotbeds. So I think turning Brevard into one of those because we have the athletes. There's a bunch of athletes in Brevard. Oh yeah. But just growing the game more. Big Wave's doing a great job of it. And yeah. uh, it's crazy how many great athletes we have in this county. I mean. Does anybody know that last night in the NHL draft, we had a kid that grew up here in Melbourne, Florida, get drafted third overall by the Montreal Canadiens? <laughs> I mean, that's unbelievable to me. But uh, that is the quality of athlete, student athlete we put out in, you know, here in this county. And not just on the field, but you heard Jackson, 4.1 GPA. And uh, so congratulations. Thanks. You know, the save percentages are, are great. Uh, but the most important stat to me is that 4.1 GPA. That is the stat that will most likely land you where you want to go. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. This course. has been a tremendous Thank amount you. of fun. Thank you, Rob. And I uh, appreciate Caleb, as always, producing. If you'd like to sit exactly where Jackson Lynch is, then right there on the bottom of your screen is the email address. Send me an email and come on in. Here's hoping everybody has a safe, And happy 4th of July tomorrow. When I see you on Thursday and beyond, be sure to have all of these, please. All right. For Caleb Brown, for Jackson Lynch, I'm Alan Slaughterzinski for the Brevard Sports Network Summer Series of Interviews.